Let's take the good old patchwork house block and make it quilt as you go. Hi, I'm Monica. Welcome back to Pattern Pool TV. And if you're new here, I post a video every week about how I make my quilt as you go quilts. So these are all of the fun, easy quilt as you go patchwork blocks that I've been making. And this is part five in the series. At the end of this series, I'm going to be joining all of the blocks together to make one complete quilt using my favorite quilt as you go joining technique, which I call the easy cover strip method. But instead of the cover strip going on the front, I'm going to put the cover strip on the back just in the same way that I did with my string quilts. So feel free to join in and make these quilt as you go blocks with me at any time. This is all part of our free worldwide quilt as you go along and if you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description. And if not, this block is perfect to add to your patchwork and quilting repertoire so stick around while I show you how to make it. To make one house block, here are the cutting instructions. Take a screenshot or head to our website. We'll also have the cutting instructions there with some step-by-step -step photos. This is a 10 inch block that's suitable to be joined together with my easy cover strip method, either on the front or on the back, or you can also use the joining strip technique. And if you wanna use the joining strip technique, cut your batting the same size as your backing fabric and check out my video that shows you how to do that. The backing is a 10 inch square with a nine inch square of batting positioned in the center so that you have that half inch gap all the way around the edge to use the easy cover strip method. Let's prepare the block for quilting. This is another stitch and flip block. For the easy cover strip method, I'm going to center my batting onto the wrong side of my backing square. And I just wanna have that half inch gap all the way around the edge. If you like, you can use quilt basting spray to hold the layers together. If you don't have quilt basting spray and you want to try holding it together with some glue, if you have a craft glue stick that is washable, non-toxic and acid free, test it on some fabric, see if you can wash it and if there's no problems, what you can do is just put a couple of swipes onto your backing fabric and smooth the batting over. Then do the same thing on the other side. This is just to temporarily hold it in place. We're now going to mark lines onto the batting. I'm using a 4B lead pencil. This will mark the batting easily. Make sure that you don't mark heavy lines because you don't want to see that line showing through your light fabric. Mark a line that's an inch and a quarter away from your backing fabric, not the batting. Down one side, and then we're going to mark that around all four edges. So an inch and a quarter away from your backing fabric. We're now going to mark a line that is going to be our starting point for our window. So working along the bottom edge of the block and on the right hand side, I have the two and a quarter inch line lined up with my backing fabric. I'm now marking a line. I'm just taking that from my bottom line about halfway up the block. Before we start stitching and flipping, we're just going to join our window and the bottom part of our house together. And we're just going to join that with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I've sewn my two and a half inch house square and my two and a half inch window square together. And I have now pressed my seam towards the darkest color. So that was just with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to position this, so that's my window, that's my house fabric, that's my inch and a quarter line up from the bottom edge, and this is my line here coming across that is two and a quarter inches away from my side edge. I'm just going to pop that in place with one pin. We're gonna to head to the sewing machine now and start stitching and flipping. I have my machine threaded up with a neutral color thread, something that's going to blend with all of my fabrics on the top, but also look good on the back of my block. I have a stitch length of three, a size 80 quilting needle, and I've just moved my needle position over to the right hand side. So the distance from the edge of the foot to the needle is a quarter of an inch, giving me my quarter inch seam allowance. And I also have an automatic tie off set for the beginning and at the end. If you don't have that function on your sewing machine, you'll just need to do a little reverse stitch at the beginning and end of each row. Take a one and a half inch by four and a half inch house piece and place it right sides together with our window section. 
making sure the edges are all aligned nicely. We're going to mark a dot that's a quarter inch away from the top and a quarter inch away from the bottom edge. This is so that our stitches don't cross over on the back of the block so it looks nice and neat. And when you start, if you don't have an automatic tie off, start with a little reverse stitch and finish with a little reverse stitch at the end. Flip your fabric over to the right side. Your fabric should meet the marked line on the outside edge and also be level with the line along the bottom edge. You can press each seam as you go, making sure that the iron stays away from the batting, but I sometimes just like to press at the end or press halfway through. Now take another inch and a half by four and a half inch piece and position it right sides together onto the opposite side of our window piece, aligning the fabrics, Mark your dot a quarter of an inch away from the beginning and a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So with a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip your fabric over to the right side. Now take the door piece and place it right sides together with the piece that we just sewed. Line that up so that the bottom edge of the door is level with our bottom marked line. Mark your dot a quarter inch away from the start and from the finish and sew with your quarter inch seam. Now take another inch and a half by four and a half inch house fabric and place it right sides together with the door. Mark your quarter inch dots and sew. Now take the inch and a half by seven and a half inch house piece and place it right sides together across this section with the door and the window. Don't worry, things aren't too level there. Just um, keep that nice and straight. That's just where the fabric has stretched a little bit as we sew. So here's a tip. Sometimes when you're stitching and flipping, you'll find that your top piece wants to stretch as you sew. So either use a large pin or a tailor's awl or a spike, and as you sew, push that fabric or gently ease that fabric towards the foot. If your house fabric is a light fabric, and some of these edges here are a bit unlevel. So when you flip that over, if they're going to show a shadow through on the right side, make sure you trim those extra little pieces away. Now onto the roof. You're only going to need one of these triangles, so you might wanna save the other triangle for another block. Take this piece and put it right sides together with your house, and you want to center this triangle so that you have an even amount extending over both opposite side edges. When we go to sew, you want to once again make your dot, but make that dot so that it's going to be a quarter of an inch away from your house fabric, not from your triangle fabric. Be careful when you sew this edge because it is on the bias grain, so it may stretch a little bit when you're sewing. So use your tailor's awl or a pin to ease the fabric towards the foot as you sew. Take your ruler and mark a line that is an inch and a quarter away from the top edge of your backing fabric and mark that line along the point of the roof. We're actually now going to cut that point away. Now let's make our chimney. Take your two background triangles and just place them next to the roof on both sides. Work out what side you want your chimney to be on. I want my chimney to be on the same side as my window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece, I'm gonna pop it on my cutting mat. I'm then going to make a cut in my triangle an inch away from the straight side edge. We now want to sew our chimney piece in the center. So I'm just going to take that and sew it right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance, making my top straight edges level. And then I'll sew the other piece onto the other side. Mm -hmm. 
So I've sewn my chimney piece in between my two triangle pieces. I have pressed the seam towards the darkest color. And now what I'm going to do is take my other triangle piece and I'm going to place it right sides together. And you can see that our underneath triangle is now a little bit out of shape, so I'm just going to trim it to the same size as our top triangle. Now back to the stitching and flipping. Position your triangle so that it is centered on the edge. So we want the same amount extending over this edge and this edge. And another way to double check that it's right is that a quarter of an inch of this triangle is extending past our roof seam here. I'm now going to make my quarter inch dots. So the dot up here is going to be a quarter of an inch away from the top of the roof, not the triangle. And this one here is actually going to be level with the seam here. Trim away any unnecessary excess fabric underneath the seam. And now to finish by sewing on the background fabric. Take a three inch by seven and a half inch background rectangle and place it right sides together with the side edge of your block. Align this piece with the inch and a quarter line that we marked onto the batting to begin with. These pieces here may be a little bit bigger just because the fabric stretches a little bit when we sew. Mark the quarter inch dots and sew. If there's any excess fabric, trim that away before you flip the piece over. Do the same to the other side. And now sew the final top and bottom pieces on. Center this piece so you may have the same amount extending over each end. Instead of making dots, this time you can sew all the way from the beginning to the end of your backing square. And repeat the process for the other side also. Press your block. Make sure if you've got any underneath shadows showing through, trim it away. And trim your block to the same size as your backing square. And don't worry if it has shrunk a little bit, we are going to trim them slightly before we join them together. Save all your scraps because we might use them again in another block. Such fun blocks, these blocks would look great in a repetitive house block quilt, but they also look fantastic with our quilt as you go along blocks. If you're joining in with our free quilt as you go along, you'll need to make two. I've made a nighttime block and a daytime block. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.